April 20th, 2023 meeting of the Grafton Mass Board of Library Trustees. I'm Roger Trahan, Chair of the Board, and I call this meeting to order. As a preliminary matter, please permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. John Babriski. Here. Harry Hogan. Here. Doug Bowman. Here. Dana Wilson. Here. Aaron Vandersteen. Here. And Dr. Stephanie Tesheda is unable to make it. She's out of town. And myself, of course, I am present. And anticipated speakers on the agenda are two finalists for library director. Please respond in the affirmative. Samantha uh, Cesario. Hello. And Thomas O'Connell. Yes, here. Okay. And so you go by Tom and you go by Sam, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, welcome. And uh, just a, as a preliminary matter, I'm not going mm -hmm. to read the entire Zoom blur, but uh, introduction to remote meeting that this open meeting of Grafton's Board of Library Trustees is being conducted remotely, consistent with then Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, and subsequent extensions due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. And so we're all familiar here with, with that uh, Zoom blurb, which has been posted on our website for the past three years. And the, normally there'd be a blurb that I would read that would talk about the um, how the meeting would be conducted, but this is a unique circumstance in that we're interviewing two candidates. Mm -hmm. And thus, in this particular meeting, there will not, this meeting will not, with the exception of our two uh, finalists, uh, will not include public comment. And so uh, as a preliminary, preliminary matter, um, I guess we, we've all had our sort of informal introductions at the, at the start of the meeting. And what I am going to do is uh, first acknowledge and, and welcome Tom and Sam for having made it from the initial round, which was done by our screening committee. And I just want to shout out um, those members of the screening committee um, who were from the library, um, Sarah Bannister and Allison Kusher, from the trustees, Carrie Hogan. I believe you were chair, Carrie. Thank you, and Doug Bowman, and our assistant town administrator, William Blake, were the five folks who comprise the screening mm -hmm. committee. So I want to publicly thank them for their uh, hard work and due diligence. And one of the things that the screening committee did that we haven't had the opportunity to do is really discuss how sort of this would go down. Um, the screening committee did have a process by which they had come up with, I think it was about 10 questions and they alternated um, those questions to the various um, interviewees one-on-one. Uh, mm -hmm. -on -one. And so I sent all of you an email, uh, and my fellow trustees, uh, not really forming a hard opinion, but saying that one way we could do this is um, having individually um, and I don't know, uh, and I'll maybe tap Aaron being the technical whiz about how, uh, once we decide who would be interviewed first, how we put the other person in a so-called room within Zoom. I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure how that's done. Um, and, the, and then the, yeah. You could certainly do that. It depends on, on how you want to conduct the interview. If, you know, since both, right. uh, both candidates are here and present and it, it is right. in a public session. So certainly, right. you know, we could ask a question and same question, you know, vice versa uh, of the candidates. And uh, and, 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 and that's that was my initial thought. And um, um, sort of listening to others, I, 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 that was proposed to me that that could be confusing. Um, but I didn't think at the onset that it, it would be as long as we alternated those questions. I had no problem with um, having folks, uh, having Tom and Sam alternate the different questions, okay? Versus having each of them be asked the slew of questions and having the second person come in and being asked those same questions. So, um, mm -hmm. Doug, were you looking to speak for Dana? Yeah, I don't, maybe I'm, so does this mean both individuals are gonna be present through all of this? That's one way to do it. Okay. 
in, in other words, what we would do, we could do is, is let's say we started with Tom, ask him one question and then ask Sam the same question, but then the next question um, we could ask Sam and then have Tom go second or, um, and I don't want to get into a big song and dance about the procedure yeah. here. Um, no, I'm just I trying just to understand us, it. I just want yeah. us to come to a consensus as to uh, whether we should interview one person all at once with those questions while they the other sits in a sort of room mm -hmm. or have them present with each other. Okay, um, Roger, I'm not sure if you were able to see, but I actually did raise my hand. Um, oh, I'm are sorry. Are we going to be using, are we going to be raising our hand to, for speaking? I, I, I think I think so, but I, 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 I've sort of been remiss sometimes in seeing those hands go up. Sometimes, you know, someone's physical hand is more noticeable to me. Um, okay. But you could do both. Um, okay. So I guess my thought is um, I, I kind of like the idea of alternating and taking turns, like you know, maybe posing the, the same question to each of the candidates, but alternating who gets to answer first. I think that to me okay. seems to be a, a, a fair approach. Is, is everyone on board with that approach? I'm not. Okay, Dana. All right. Is anyone else not on board? I, seems, I guess that. Uh, all right. <laughs> I, I would just say it seems like we do one at a time, but um, seems yeah. strange to have them at the same same time and hearing okay. each other's answers. But it, it, uh, it I'm okay either way. Fair to me. To, I see. So right. both of them. I mean, because they're gonna. I well, I, I, in in I my thought, my, my thought, and my my thought on the alternating approach is that let's give the, the example of the select board when they appoint committee members. They're yeah, in, this, in the presence of each other. I don't know. And I know it's not apples to apples. Yeah, I know it's not. It's so, totally different. Uh, then I guess we'll have to just hopefully rush through a procedural motion um, it, it, because it's, it sounds like we're uh, differing in opinions um, as to how to approach this. So I guess I would accept a procedural motion by someone to take one approach and we could vote on that. And if that passes, we'll proceed with that. If not, we'll go to the opposite approach. So I guess I'm just not clear on on the opposite approach. Are we going to ask one candidate to leave the meeting? And then when we're done with the first candidate, ask the second candidate to. No, 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 no. The alternating approach would be with both of them present. The one, the solo approach would be to ask either start with Tom and ask him all the same questions while Sam was in a sort of room, not privy to that. And then and then ask Sam the same questions and go through all of those with her. Um, Aaron has a question. So, yes. Yeah, so in the interest of time, uh, yes. I, I'd, I'd like to make a, a motion to uh, interview the candidates um, uh, one at a time. Um, and I'm happy to facilitate um, you know, uh, that, that process. Um, so yeah. I'll second. Okay. All right, motion made. All right. So. Um, Carrie had agreed to take minutes because we don't have a um, a scribe. So are you and still on for that? Uh, yes, I'm with the understanding that we're recording the meeting. So I'm I will create the minutes from the recording after the meeting, Roger, if that's okay. Sure. Okay. So that and I'll, I'll cross really I'll cross I'll cross my fingers that it records correctly. So motion made by Aaron, seconded by John to take each of the <clears> interviewees <throat> uh, entire questions one at a time. Um any discussion on the motion? Hearing none by roll call. John Babriski. Aye. Carrie Hogan. Aye. Doug Bowman. Aye. Dana Wilson. She got put in the um, attend attendees room. How did that so, happen? Yeah. Roger, are you able to give other people like admin privileges into this I, call yeah, as well? I should be able to, and I am looking how to do that. So um, for panelists, um, so Aaron um, may co-host mm -hmm. or, or, or John may co-host as well. Uh, okay. Yeah, either way, that, that way we can just help uh, it, smooth things okay. along. Okay, sure. 
So um, you, you're taking a roll call vote. Yeah, and in the last, uh, all right. So Dana, did you hear that uh, motion in second? Yeah, I did okay. hear it. Yes, all I right, did. So I second it. Uh, in, in other words, uh, it was already motioned and seconded, okay. and we were going through a roll call. So, do you agree with? Well, actually, it was your your initial thought yeah. that each of them would be interviewed separately? I do. I, okay, I take that as an I. Yes, uh, yes. Trahan, I declare the motion carried unanimously. Yeah, and, and, and so uh, and Aaron, <laughs> and uh, and my turn, and I vote I. Oh, no, I thought that you voted I. You proposed it. No, no. I just, oh, I'm I just, sorry, Aaron. I, I apologize. That, I told you okay. Dana was was not there when you. All right, kid. Thank you so much, Aaron. All right. Um. <clears throat> all right. So Trahan, I declare the motion carried unanimously. So, um, deciding who will um, uh, go first. Um, I sort okay. of had the idea of uh, alphabetical order. Anyone have any ideas, or either of you two want to volunteer? <laughs> Well, I think that um, that Tom Tom was in the meeting first, so mm -hmm. happy to give the floor to him if, if okay. he's ready to go. Okay. All right. So, um, you okay with that, both of you? Yeah, that's fine. All right. I, cool. Yeah. All right. And uh, so, uh, Aaron or John uh, to then put Sam in that room uh, as co-host. I'm not sure the mechanics of that. Um, there is a way to put a panelist on hold. I don't know if that's what we, what it's called that we want to do. Or do we simply, yeah. I mean, if we, okay. So let me, let me give this a shot. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm going to try putting. I cut out there. I'm back guys. So play, please, John. Okay. I'll try it right now. Excellent. Okay. So Samantha is on hold. Um, so she's basically in the waiting room right now. Okay. Um, I think that's how it works for the webinar. So okay. <laughs> I'm just kind of in the void right now. <laughs> all right. So that, that took all of 40 minutes. Okay. Um, so what um, I had proposed <clears throat> as, as one way of doing this is, is have Tom uh, give a two to three minute introduction. And uh, we can go through maybe eight to 10 questions and ask Tom to then give a couple three minute max reply to each of each of those in that anticipating that each of the interviews for both Tom and Sam should probably be wound down in around 30 minutes time. And so I guess we'll just pay attention to our stopwatches. So uh, welcome, Tom. Uh, to, uh, welcome. Thank you. And uh, so tell us a, a bit about yourself. Sure, happy to. Um, so my name is Tom O'Connell. And um, when um, when my wife was in graduate school, um, I, we were living in uh, in Ithaca, New York, and uh, and I needed to get a job. And, uh, and my options were the dining hall or the library. And, uh, and I chose the library. And uh, because I thought that would be a little more um, perhaps interesting uh, than the dining hall, and so I, I went with that, and uh, and I'm really glad I did because that was the uh, the start of of a big adventure for me. And once, as soon as I got there, I knew that it was it was where I felt comfortable. It was an area that I felt like I was at home. And uh, so when she was done with her degree, I decided that I would pursue one as well. And um, so I, I started working on my MLS and working in uh, in other in some libraries paraprofessionally, trying to decide what type of librarianship I wanted to pursue. And um, initially thought I wanted to go into academic librarianship because that's where my uh, my formative days were were spent in a library. Um, and so uh, so pursued that. And uh, and uh, when I finished my degree, I started working at uh, at, a, at a university. Um, and uh, did that for a little while. I ended up working in a for a library software company, which was a wonderful experience because it gave me um, a lot of knowledge that um, that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise, as well as the ability to work with librarians um, in all types of libraries and all sizes and all over the world, actually. So I was working with public libraries. I was working with academic libraries, special libraries, corporate libraries, you name it. 
um, large, small, in between, uh, urban, rural, whatever it may be, here, Hong Kong, all over the place. Um, and so it really gave me a chance to focus the type of librarianship that I felt called for, that I felt really drawn towards. And, uh, and what I realized um, from this by working with the different librarians was that what I was really called to was the public sphere, working in public libraries. That's where I felt that I had, um, I felt most comfortable. Um, the other element that was interesting working for the library software company is that we were developing the entire library software system, the ILS as it is referred to. And so I got a unique knowledge of how all the parts of a library work together. And so circulation and cataloging and acquisitions and reference and how all the different elements um, are, are literally working hand in hand, wire to wire, to make sure that everything is working within the library. Um, and so seeing that in a, in a very, in a, in a, in a, a physical sense, electronically, as well as my library experience, I've worked in all every different element of the library. So I have worked in reference, I've worked in circulation, cataloging, acquisitions, collection development, um, administrative. And so I have a clear understanding of how all the different parts of a library work together. And that's really important to me because that's something that really drives my, me as a librarian. Um, I, I fear that sometimes in librarianship, we, we tend to silo and we tend to get, um, we, each part of the library is working independently and not focusing as much and not appreciating and not taking benefit of the fact that we're all working together and the ways that the library all works together. And so my experience uh, has been has been really an acquisition to, of um, learning all the different parts of the library at all levels and uh, and a clear understanding of how all those parts work together. The um, So I ended up working at the uh, library system. So it was like a CW Mars, as, as you, I know your library is a part of, as mine is. Um, and so uh, over in New York, and I was working with, again, lots of different libraries. And so I was working with large and small and urban and rural libraries of all different sizes, working with them to try to meet the needs of their patron and uh, find, figure out what, was, what were the best ways that we could facilitate what we were offering at the library in order to meet the recreational and informational and community needs of, in the library. Um, so that was uh, as well good experience and again got me into lots of different uh, different environments and, and uh, working with lots of different types of libraries. The one area that I felt I didn't have um, as much experience, um, though some from my previous work experiences, but I didn't feel that I had um, as much uh, collection development um, and uh, budgetary experience. And so that's why I moved to Springfield so that I could um, be head of collection development. So I am in charge of, um, among other things, I'm in charge of all the acquisitions and all, all the collection development for, um, for our main location, as well as eight branches, um, serving a population of about 150,000 people here in Springfield and working with a budget um, for this fiscal year at about $712,000 for library materials. Um, and so it's been very rewarding and I've learned a lot and had uh, been able to accomplish a lot here in, in Springfield. But um, again, it's been a focusing of, of trying to decide where my, my heart lies as to how I want to see myself as a librarian. And um, as rewarding as this has been, um, the, the, the city is just a little, a little bit too large. And working with 150,000 people, um, for me, um, that is not the right fit. And primarily because my form of librarianship is very much um, uh, in and among, okay? So what, what is important to me is to get where the people are and, and find ways to, to reach out and, and have relationships with the, um, the patrons that I'm serving. What I'm looking for is a community. And so 150,000, I know that I'm not reaching everybody. I just have to ex kind of accept that and find ways to reach as many as possible, but in, 
but I know I'm gonna, not going to reach 150,000. So I'm looking for a smaller environment. I'm looking for a, a smaller community around, let's say, 20,000. Um, that would be that would be a community that I can actually be part of and that I can actually get to know. And, you know, so um, are we are we ever going to meet the needs of every single uh, community member? Probably not, but I would have a much better chance in a smaller community. And that's really what I'm looking for, a small community that I can be a part of and that I can serve. And so um, I wanna bring all my experience that I have in all the different departments, clear understanding of how all the different departments work and how they work together, mm -hmm. um, as well as supervising in all the different, in every single, in every department uh, that, I've, that I've done over my, my years as a librarian and uh, put that together to serve a community. All right, thank you, thank you, Tom. Um, okay. And I'll, I'll uh, um, I will, um, I'm looking at, um, as I'm looking at my screen, hmm. I see top left, Carrie Hogan. Um, I, I guess I can call on Carrie for, for a question if you're prepared to, to ask uh, Tom uh, a question. And what I'm going to try to do is, um, uh, I, I do appreciate your, your thorough uh, intro, uh, but for the sake of time, um, I, of I guess we're going to try to to keep these uh, uh, the responses themselves to about no more than three minutes, so that um, that you know we'll get a a good um, a good flavor for uh, uh, the scope of questions that will be sure. asked of both of you. So, uh, uh, Carrie, I will strive for brevity. All right, thank <laughs> you, Tom. <laughs> I really appreciated your your answer and um and I appreciated our you know our initial interview. So nice to talk to you again, Tom. Yes, as well. Thank you. Yes, yes. So um so I'm going to ask a a question that we asked from the first round, um, but I wanted the um full board to to hear. Um so um please describe the specific behaviors or techniques that you would implement to create an environment of cooperation and collaboration at work. And please provide us with a specific example of how you've used these behaviors or techniques in the past. Sure, cooperation and collaboration. So collaboration is something that's very important to me. And so in in, in each situation that I've been in supervising, um, it's very important to me to, to make sure that I have a team, that I have a team that's working together. And so collaborate, communication and collaboration are really the, the core of that. And so um, um, I think that that um, the way that this is developed is is trust. And so um, the way that we establish trust is by um, uh, by establishing what um, where we are all headed together. And so my what I would strive to do would be to gather my team together um, and uh, lay out where I see us going, where I would like the the department with the the team to move to what they can expect of me and what I would expect of them. And that, that opening of, of communication, I think is the key to establishing positive long range goals um, and establishing um, an environment that people feel safe and engaged to be able to, um, to interact and to, um, to, uh, to add to the environment. Okay, so to, um, to, um, to bring ideas and to work together uh, is is um, is only fostered when we have that initial element of trust, and so that'd be the first key for me. Um, so establishing that, um, opening up clear communications, letting everybody know that they can always come to me. I'm oh I always have uh, meetings for my staff for my team because I think that that's really important to have um, a venue where everybody can bring what's important to them. Um, they they get an idea of what everybody's working on, which I think is very important because that respects the dignity of each worker, and also the opportunity to share um, ideas, um, concerns, um, pats on the back, whatever it may be, but that open communication. So that is really the key for me, for um, for building a strong uh, environment that that people will feel um, inspired to come and work at. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Tom. And um, so on my screen, I, I'm looking next uh, at John Babriski for a question. 
Uh, yeah. So, uh, I guess I was wondering, um, what type of research you did about Grafton and about our library in particular, and then mm -hmm. what you think it's kind of like a two-parter or three-parter. So, so what, what research you may have done into the position and the library itself in the town, um, and then how that kind of relates to what you think Grafton's challenges are, if you've, if you've mm. been able to, um, figure some of that out or, um, and, or what you think, like <clears throat> in general, there are for challenges for libraries for the next, you know, five, 10, 20 years, even. Sure. Sure. Um, boy, a three-parter. So about a minute for each, right? <laughs> I, I can reiterate if you need to. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so, um, First of all, I'll say I'm a librarian. So did I do research? Of course I did. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, that, that that's a given that I'm going to do some research. Um, so first of all, Grafton itself, it sounds, looks like a wonderful town. Um, it's an area that I'm that I'm somewhat familiar with um, and very interested in. Um, so the cultural experiences that are available there, um, having Worcester so nearby and lots of museums and such, as well as having the natural elements are re is really important to me. That's really the type of situation that I'm looking for, to have cultural experiences nearby, but uh, where I actually am uh, spending more of my time is more of the um, the hikes in the woods and, and perhaps some fishing um, and so things like that. So the area looks like a very good area and the, and the type of area that I would like to be in. Um, so for the library, um, I'll, I'll say this, I'm, I'm not applying to every position that is available in the state of Massachusetts, okay? I am doing research to find the position that I feel meets my temperament and my uh, what's important to me as a librarian. And so I did a very thorough look at, at um, through your website, um, through the library website, and saw things that really spoke to me. And so the programming that's being done, so the, you know, the young scientist, and the um, uh, the book club with meditation and things like that, and it's very service oriented as well. So you know you offer things like test proctoring and faxing, which everybody says, oh nobody faxes anymore. And as soon as you say that, then you have five people come to the library saying I need to fax, right? So it's a very service oriented environment, and which really speaks to me because for me user experience is what's important. That's really the key to what we're doing as librarians. And so seeing elements um, re represented for the library activities that were very engaging um, and very service oriented was, was very positive to me. I, I felt that was really great. Um, now, um, challenges, um, I, I know about your children's room um, and what happened there. And so, and I, I'm wonderful to hear that you've reopened just as, you know, a couple of days ago. Um, in the in the community room. So that's great. So you're moving forward. And so on the one hand, I look at that and I say, well, you know, that's a big challenge because I know it's a new building and I read through all the uh, community comments of, you know, when he opened it up, the questions, the Q&A for the public about, you know, the new building and such. Um, so I imagine that having um, something like that happen so soon after having a new building in place is is a great challenge. Um, but what I see from that, as, as daunting as that must be, is that the community moves forward. And I see that, you know, that you, uh, you, you were very transparent to the community and letting them know. And you started having, you know, uh, story hours at the clock museum and, you know, doing things that um, were adapting, which is really what's important to me as a librarian. That's what we do as a librarian. So if you, in, again, you were asking about like, where do I see librarianship going in the next few years? I see it doing exactly what we've been doing for the past 150 years, really. Different technology, sure. Different formats, of course. But what we do as librarians is we listen to our patrons. We we talk to them, we communicate, communicate we have an open conversation. I'm a, I'm, a libra I'm a librarian, but I'm also a patron. I'm a library patron first. And so that open communication with the patrons, finding out what's important to them and then adapting. And that's what I see is happening at your library. It's like, okay, we don't have our children's room right now. Where can we put it? And so um, what I see from the library staff, from what you, the trustees are doing, and the response that I see you know, on Facebook uh, you know, from the patrons saying, you know, thank you so much for doing this you know, we're with you, um, is very encouraging.
Thank, Thank you, you, Tom. And uh, Doug. Um, um, I'm actually, I, I actually would love to defer to Dana and Aaron since I've had the opportunity to, to talk to Tom in the selection committee. So I'll let them go first. All right. Sounds good. And then good. if there's time, I'll jump in. Okay. Uh, Dana. Okay. Um, let me see if I can put this. Well, I guess, um, Tom, what you've described is, I mean, the things you, you described, I think are very important as far as listening to patrons and also the open communication mm -hmm. and, you know, some of the adapt to, uh, how the library has adapted, mm -hmm. I think. And, you know, there's more things that have been done. Um, but I was wondering too, um, I know the transition um, from for us to be looking for a new library director hasn't hasn't always been that smooth. Mm. And I wonder how how will you how will you treat your staff or how will you get to know um, the librarians and the associates that will be working in the library? I'm I'm wondering how how your um, interaction will be like how mm -hmm. how do you, how do you make that work? Sure, sure. So that's interesting. You know, when I was working at the library um, uh, system over in New York, I was working with about 66 different libraries of lots, of, as I mentioned earlier, all different sizes, lot different environments. And so not surprisingly, especially as we entered into like the COVID era and everything, um, there's a lot of turnover, particularly with directors. And um, what what I witnessed, it was, it was really enlightening to me um, that what I saw was that when a director came into a new environment um, with with their with dare I say an agenda, um, with preconceptions, with with um, notions of well, we've all, I've always done it this way at my other library, so this is what I'm going to implement from day one in my new library. Those were the times that I saw were not as successful, um, and so the times. The experiences that I saw for for new directors and and for what I've experienced with my positions is to take the time to get to know the environment. Um, do I have ideas? Do I have things that I've done in the past that have worked and I'd love to carry forward? Of course, but that doesn't mean that they're appropriate and applicable to each environment and they may not work in your environment. There are things that I do in Springfield that um, just inherently the nature of a very of a large city may not may not transition may not translate to the environment that's there. Um, my dealings with staff would not be the same because I'm dealing with different people, and so my my um, approach to that would be um, would be one of of taking the time to orient myself in the new environment so that I got to know what was really needed for that situation, for your situation. Um, I, I'm not gonna come in and say, you know, well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the one phrase that I, I almost forbid my staff to say to me in, in staff meetings is, but we've always done it that way. And that, that's just, that's not my approach to librarianship. And so what I've what I've done in the past is is not necessarily what's going to work. And so my approach would be to get to know the staff, um, to build up a good rapport, build some trust so that everybody feels safe and engaged together. And then we can move forward from there. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Aaron. So I, I had a, a couple questions and um, you've done a really nice job of um, actually answering those through through your initial um, you know uh, uh, talk at the beginning and actually yeah, Carrie's question was was really quite a, quite um, aligned with uh, what I was looking to, to to find out as well but I just want to say that you know first and foremost this this is a leadership ship role and, of course. you know and then of course, also, it's an administrative role as well. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to say you know one's more important than the other, um, but really, it's uh, in order to build a, a, a cohesive you know um, library staff and and um, organization. Uh, you know, we, we really need a really strong strong leader, and that mm -hmm. means you know um, trying to 
uh, make sure that everybody at the at the library of, of, of people who work there, you know, feel valued and that they're a contributing member of the organization. So exactly, yes. So uh, it's not really a question, but that's kind of where where my head's at, and I think I can probably echo a lot of um, what what the other trustees and staff are, are looking for as well in, in a candidate. But you're welcome to speak to that if you like, or um, or defer. Thank you. No, that that that's great. I mean, because that's that's very much aligned with what with what I'm with how I'm feeling about it. Um, my, I mean, my my team, you know, and I refer to them as my team because we we're, we're a collective unit. But you still have to have somebody who is going to make the decisions. You still have to have somebody who is pr providing the vision for where we're moving forward, exactly. um, with, with input from the step from the team, of course, and uh, relying on the on the experiences. And the productivity and the performance of the team is is where we are, um, but still that that initial vision needs to come from somewhere. Um, and so my experiences have been that um, uh, you know it, it's it's um, we're we're not reinventing the wheel. Okay, I mean you have a library that is a functioning, engaging, community centered library. And so, um, you know, I would, it would be presumptuous of me to think that, you know, oh, you know, let me, I'll be in there a month and I'll have everything fixed for your library. And that's just not my approach to librarianship. Um, so do I have the administrative experience? I do. And, and you know, and that, that is, that's almost part of why I, I don't feel the need to um, be as, as, um, as dogmatic of a an administrator, because what I've seen is that um, having vision and getting people on board and engaged and and uh, um, signed up um, is the way to uh, is to move forward. Um, I you know I have I'm I've got I've got seven people on my staff that I I I, um, I supervise directly uh, as well as a volunteer. I'm working with two different unions. Try to explain that one. Um, so I have lots of experience in that. I also have like about 15 other um, staff members in the library that I that I supervise indirectly. And so my my interaction with them um, is is um, to respect the dignity of the worker. And that's really where I come from. Um, and because, uh, you know, it doesn't work unless everybody is, is signed on board. So mm -hmm. thank you, Tom. Thank, Thank you. you, Tom. All right. Um, so I will uh, ask a question, and it has to do with similar, I, I guess, to to Aaron's uh, comments that that you spoke to, and I hadn't been aware until you discussed it of the, I guess, the scope of of oversight of of others and employees and volunteers. Mm -hmm. But I will still ask that. You know, we do have we do have about a million dollar budget. We have about mm -hmm. 20 staff and the related scheduling that goes along with it sure. to keep the place running. Sure. Yep. Uh, yeah. 22,000 or so square foot building. Yep. Um, coupled with um, when you, you spoke of the, the administrative piece, uh, I, I also think of like the mandatory, the mandatory state reports, like the ARIS reports mm -hmm. and yep. even monthly director reports. So right. as I mentioned, some of the, the big stuff, <laughs> that yeah. a director does. Sure. Uh, what steps do you think would be needed to successfully transition from your current role to what I see as a more a robust role to really mm. to make that transition to an actual director being mm -hmm. in charge of everyone and everything? So sure, sure. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean the position that I'm in now has um has lots of elements of that built into it. So that I'm I'm working with a budget, I'm working with a multi multi-line budget. Um, so it's not just the resources. I'm also responsible for, um, you know, the, the, my staff's time, my staff's um, salaries and re reviews. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm already engaged in those elements. Um, action plans for our library. I'm very involved with doing that um, and making sure that we have a, a, a accurate and timely um, action plans uh, that we're meeting. Um, so I'm involved with that as well. Um, also just care of the building. I mean, I'm, I'm working in a hundred, 112 year old building in, in the, in the middle of Springfield. 
So I have uh, quite a bit of experience dealing with like um, flooding in our cataloging room. Um, and so, uh, you know, I've, I've had experience with that as well. Um, so um, the transition, what, the way I approach this is that um, although, you know, one person needs to be the, the head, um, it's, it's knowing who the right person to reach out to is. Okay. So, um, I, you know, I'm not an, electri an electrician, but if, you know, something happens electrical in the building, um, I'm going to need to know the appropriate steps to, to take to reach out to and find the person who's going to, um, to address that. Um, so, uh, it's, it's something that I do have experience in now, though, not the director, though, when the director is not there, I, I have been, um, you know, it, on a on a daily basis or so, um, acting in that role. Uh, you know, when the director's away, um, but that's not the same as being being the director uh, long run. Um, but I'm I'm confident that with my experience, uh, I'm I'm ready for for this step. Okay, thank you. And um, as I go back around full circle, I I'm at Carrie again. Hi. Uh, so, Roger, I guess in the interest of time, I think we're sure. about at the 30 minute mark. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, I, I personally feel satisfied. Um, and of course, I did have the benefit of the, the prior interview. So mm -hmm. I don't have any additional questions at this time. I thank Tom very much for his thorough answers. And um, and um, yeah, thank you. Right. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. All right. And, and, and yes, for the interest of time, I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty of, of what I could ask. Um, but I, I think that um, I'm, I'm satisfied with the, the scope of the questions and answers. Is everyone on board with uh, moving forward with our other candidate? Yeah, certainly. Um, if Tom wants to give a, a closing statement. That yeah, would be fun please, too. please. Thank you for reining me in, Aaron. Uh, yeah, uh, a couple of minutes or so for a closing statement would be great. Uh, I, I, I want to thank you for the opportunity. Um, this has been a great experience, um, and uh, I remain very interested in the position. I think it's a good fit for me, um, and I think that that the experiences that I would bring to this position would be beneficial to the library community. Um, as to you know, as to the the library community itself, I'm I'm very excited about about um, what's being done. And uh, and I think that the the staff there is is um, is providing great service to the patrons. And uh, as 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 long as you, ha that's not done without an, an engaged and and positive staff. And so as long as you have that, then it's amazing what can be accomplished beyond that. Um, my form of librarianship is 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 basically twofold, and that one is what I, I mentioned earlier. Um, which is listening to the patrons, listening to the users and adapting and make and hopefully anticipating even. Um, the other element is to find the unreached and uh, you know to, to search out the people that we haven't found before. And so that would that would be the one other element that I'd want to express and, and let you know. Um, something that's very that I'm very passionate about is that again, as I mentioned it, uh, my experience here, not being able to reach a whole 150,000, but um, we can we can always reach more, and so you know it, whatever uh, whatever elements that we're not addressing, wherever whatever patents we're we're not meeting the needs of, um, what's very important to me is to go where they are um, and find them. You know, go to the go to the farmers market if it, if need be. Go to the um, the council on aging and work very very closely with them. Um, you know, and so um, find the patrons that aren't being served that don't uh, that don't get the uh, I love our regulars, but uh, but I'm also very passionate about finding the people that we um, are not yet servicing. So that would be just one other element that I'd want you to know about. All right, thank you, Tom. Right, and uh, so I will then um, have, I'm not sure if it was John or Aaron, uh, uh, migrate Tom to the sort of waiting area, okay. bring back Sam. Do you okay. want me to do you want me to wait or you, you okay so here here's what we'll okay so after both of you after we interview Sam we we will have a discussion for for next steps okay and that will be a, a public session so you would be not a panelist but you could it's an open meeting you could certainly okay. 
you know, a view that discussion. Both Wonderful. of you can certainly do that. Okay. Then uh, if you can put me in a room and, and, and just bring me back in when, when you're ready. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right, so we wouldn't, oh, we thanks. wouldn't bring you back in as a panelist. No, we would. Right. Yeah. In other words, we would discuss um, amongst ourselves, but you'd be privy to the whole conversation. That sounds fine. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thanks. Um, Thanks. Um, can we just have like one minute with both of them in the in the waiting room? Sure. sure. I just have a few questions. Oh, one quick question. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Thanks, Tom. All right. Y yes. Um, so, are we making a decision on this call? Uh, okay. No. So here here's the thing. Okay. And and from a procedural standpoint, uh, there are three things that could happen. Okay. Uh, number one, um, offer the position to one of them, uh, pending contacting references and successful contract negotiations and a background check. They typical is typical of all you know a, an employment like this. Um, number two, have one or both candidates to a library and meet the staff as the next step of interviewing. Um, I've been given feedback that I've I've received that I guess for this type of a position it would be unusual to go through the entire process without actually having, number one, have them come in in person, especially since they're both local. Uh, I had set it up as a Zoom because that third person who had since um, withdrawn the candidacy was from Texas. And so right. just to make things fair, I had, I had proceeded with entirely Zoom, but now that we have two people that are in Massachusetts, and it would seem that in in light of that, it would seem number one an oddity to just do it entirely with Zoom in that context. And also number two, we had also spoken about in our open meetings about really needing to listen to the uh, employees more. Okay, and and I value that, and I think we all do. And and by having them do a walkthrough would be an additional step in that process okay um the third is if we if we thought that neither finalist had the oomph so to speak to take on the director role and we decided uh, uh, like as an affirmative vote to pass over both finalists and and keep the position posted and then repost in the other forums those are the three um things that that i think could roll out here and so to answer your question, Doug, no, I don't think we're necessarily uh, in a rush to to hire someone just for the sake of hiring them now. Um, and if we felt that one of them was the right fit or potentially the right fit, that it may be a good idea to have them meet staff and have them do a walkthrough and, 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 and have this in person. That's great, Is Roger. That, I mean, that's that's right in line with what I was thinking. Okay. Anyone else um, have any thoughts? I mean, on that? I think the yeah. the best case scenario is that we like both of them, um, but yeah. I think it's important to have the reference checks and then, of course, have that meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Okay. Yeah, I I really like that. So if we you know, if we like both of them, have them both come and then give the opportunity for staff to you know to provide you know, input as well. I I yeah. really like that too. Yeah. And yeah. So. Yes, Dana. So I guess I I think the reference check is very important. Um, I guess what I was going to ask, so would you lead them, you or, um, William lead them through the, um, lead them through the library and then they'd have sit down discussions with people. How would uh, that work? I'm not sure how that would look. I just, okay. I, 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 I guess, um, we'd have to iron out the mechanics of whether this would be a, a, a posted meeting. I don't, I can't imagine that, you know, during the middle of the day, all of us would be available, but certainly- oh, yeah. Um, no, I, yeah, yeah. No, I th I think it would be you know one person doing it. Yeah, but I just, I was just trying to figure out how. Um, I I think I don't know. It's an interesting idea, but I just was wondering. So let's say um, let's just say we do that, and then some of the staffs the staff are the staff going to tell us who they recommend? I mean, how? So we're giving them the opportunity to meet this person. Or well, at least, it, but it's it, but also um, to to take a look around and and go, you know see the the facilities as well. Um, you know, I just we really wonder. You know, I don't mean to overtalk. I just no, that's don't. Okay. I don't. I'm just wondering. Let's say 
we do that and then we don't give them the opportunity to um I, I, you know, I, I think it's an interesting idea. I just, I'm trying to remember all the interviews I've been on and I guess I have met staff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. before. So right. I just wonder, it just, if we don't give them, it could backfire on us if we don't, if they say, Hey, we don't like this person or we have this issue. And then, you know, we disagree. It just, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. I know. And, and ultimately we, we do have to, if we are doing our due diligence and acting in good faith, um, we, we still are the decision maker. In mm -hmm. other words, we can seek feedback, but we are the decision maker in this process. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, as long as you're acting in good faith and in, in, in having th these uh, two individuals, if we think that we would want to proceed with both of them, one or both, to go through that process. Um, but ultimately, we can, we can be open to feedback from the staff it may be through the union stewards perhaps um sure. but um ultimately it is our decision um that that's the only non-union staff there and we're we're tasked with as elected officials to to gather as much information from various people mm -hmm. to make that decision um and so it, it is possible though i wouldn't say it would backfire but it is possible that that we may get feedback that certain individuals may or may not like one or both. Um, but ultimately that is our call. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I would see it as almost like, you know, when you go to an interview, someone, they walk you through the, the office and kind of show you around. Right. Um, and if you run into it, run into somebody, then you can say hi and talk, but that's, right. I mean, the goal is not to have them do one-on-one -on -one interviews with the staff, right? No, it's no, just really the no. tour of the facility. Okay. Right. That's like Sounds a great. meet and greet. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, Dana. Like a meet and greet, wherever okay. that may be. Okay, thank so you. So I I I'd be willing to I'd be willing to do that. I, I can tell you, and I'll share this with the public, right? Uh until um through April seventh. I'm in a layoff status, but I just accepted a position. So but I have some congratulations. Thank you. I yeah. have some time on my hands, like throughout mm -hmm. the day between now and then, um, to be very uh available. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, so I'm flexible there and William would be, or Evan would be, um, you know, in town. So. Yeah. And uh, I'd, I'd be glad to do it too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All right. Then we will bring Sam back. Um, and are we going to ask, be asking basically the same, same questions? In no, the same we order? will ask. Yes. Yeah, same questions in the same order. Okay. Uh, anything else before we bring her in? Uh, no, no. Okay. I'm glad we had this discussion. Yeah. Here she comes. Hello, Sam. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Okay. Good. How are you? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so what what we uh, did uh, is we uh, met with Tom, yes. and there were actually five of us um, who asked questions, and um, between an opening statement, which we'll soon have you do, and those questions, we felt that. Uh, that opening statement and five questions and then subsequently a closing statement, you know, gave us a good, good uh, uh, feel, you know, uh, for, uh, you know, him as a candidate. And now it's your turn. And what I said to Tom at the onset is, <clears throat> excuse me, how about a two or three minute opening statement? And then we'd have about two, two to three minutes high level for each question. But in all fairness, he had an eight minute opening statement. So in all fairness, I would grant you up to that, but you don't have to take that entire eight minutes, but I, I want to be fair here. So, okay. so. Okay, yeah. great. So I haven't participated in a interview like this before. So um, thank you all for inviting me back. Um, it was great to meet, you know, Doug and Carrie the first time around and then I ran into Carrie at the Worcester Art Museum like two days later. <laughs> uh, um, so as far as an opening statement, I have worked in libraries for the past several years and feel like it is my true passion in life. Um, I was a social worker previously um, and you know, worked with families in crisis, worked for Section 8, kind of worked all over the board. Um, and honestly, that experience has 
served me more in my roles in libraries than my degree probably has. Um, so I have been thinking a lot about what do the next few years look like for me? What do I want to do with my career? Um, like I had said in my cover letter, I love youth services. You know, there's nothing that beats a toddler story time and blowing bubbles and just having the kids have an absolute ball. You know, it's the best. But, you know, I don't know that I want to be doing that five years from now. Um, I only have so many story times in me, you know. <laughs> um, so when this opportunity became available, I absolutely needed to jump on it. Um, I definitely feel drawn to directing, especially now in this climate where I feel like um, libraries need strong leadership more than ever. Um, I feel like I can be, you know, not only an advocate for the library itself and the services and all of that, but also for the staff and to provide the support for staff. Um, yeah, I, I did not, I will, I'm not gonna lie, I did not have an opening statement prepared. Um, I did have lots of practice interview questions that I, I looked up ahead of time. So maybe we'll hit those at some point. <laughs> and, and I don't think there's any right or wrong, wrong to this. It's just a matter of allowing there to be a, a sort of open-ended discussion to your liking, you know, and, and doesn't have to be long. So okay. there, is, there is no mandate that things need to be eight minutes. So if you are, if, if you're, if you're, uh, if you want to transition, if you're okay with transitioning to the yeah. first question, we can we can go forward in that way. Yeah, that sounds uh, great. <laughs> all right, awesome. So, uh, Carrie Hogan, uh, your uh, question. So, just for, before I get my question, see, I didn't realize that that was you at the Worcester Art Museum. I knew, like, so that, and actually, Dean, I was with Dana and another former trustee, oh, and I I recognized you, but I'm like, how do I know her? You know, Donna you look looked on your face room. that was like, I recognize that face, but cannot place it, and I was like, this is not the time or place to have that conversation, so <laughs> I'm gonna go get my glass of champagne and go stand on the other side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh my gosh, you know, it, was, it was a wonderful event, so um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Yeah, so, it was oh, fantastic. Goodness, so funny. Yeah, it was great. Um, okay, so we will jump into my question. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, okay, and of course, I get something in my eye. Um, okay, so um, so I'm going to bring a question that we um, had asked you in the first round, and uh, for the benefit uh, for the trustees other than Doug and I, um, who weren't able to hear your answer the first time. So uh, if you could please describe the specific behaviors or techniques that you implement to create an environment of cooperation and collaboration at work, and please provide us with a specific example of how you've used these behaviors or techniques in the past. Yeah, um, so I do a lot of collaborative work. Um, my natural instinct is to collaborate. Um, mm -hmm. I um, My, so sorry, I'm trying to think of this as like, so we collaborate a lot in the building, but also externally in the community as well. Um, so some of the ways that we have done that is to find projects that we're all interested in working on. Um, you know, I'm sorry, Carrie, can you say it one more time? I Of course, of course, yes. Um, so, um, so describe the specific behaviors or techniques that you implement to create an environment of cooperation and collaboration at work, please provide us with a specific example of how you have used these behaviors or techniques in the past. And I think William asked it last time. I didn't ask it last time. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. So I am a very much a democratic leader. So I very much follow a democratic leadership model. I think it's really important for my team to have buy-in and opinions and get to work on things that they're really interested in. Um, so I meet with my staff regularly. We meet once a week as a full team. And then I also meet with my young adult librarian once a week to check in. How are things going? What does the April program calendar look like? Um, you know, and I also not only encourage, but really require my team to work on projects together. Um, so like if the young adult librarian is working on a seed starting program, then one of my assistant librarians is going to help her with that. Um, so, you know, I think I had mentioned this the last time that libraries can be incredibly siloed. And I think that that is something that we really need to address in the field is more collaboration between departments and with each other in general. Um, you know, so looking for those opportunities. So like right now, um, I am collaborating with our adult services person on this like hula hooping program <laughs> in May. Oh, uh, we're having somebody come in like a full all ages thing, but we don't do a lot of true all ages programming. Um, so this is a really nice opportunity to be able to do that. Um, you know, I also want everyone on my team to be working on even the mundane tasks together. So, you know, it's not always me asking the same person to go out and clean the play area for the fifth time in <laughs> the day. Um, everybody's kind of doing it together. So we really split uh, the responsibilities and, and delegate as much as possible. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And um, so John Babriski. Hi. Uh, so my question is kind of a, a multi-part question. Um, it's basically asking, uh, so how, how did you research for this position? Like, what did you uh, look into when you were looking at this position about the town and the library? And um, if you were able to find some of those, so, some more detailed information, like what do you think are Grafton's challenges, like specifically for the library? Um, in the next, uh, you know, five, 10, 20 years. And if that's uh, not enough, or uh, if you want to add more onto it, um, you know, you could add general, what you think kind of the, the challenges are for libraries in general for the, those next um, coming years. Sure. Yeah. So I did extensive research before even applying for this position. And um, in the interim between first and second interview, um, so I looked up the demographics of the town. You are a little bit smaller than Milford, around 20,000 residents. We have around 28. Um, you know, you are a slightly more affluent area, whereas Milford is slightly higher poverty, around 10%. Um, you know, I read your strategic plan. I actually watched the last board meeting. Um, so you know, I think that this is all of the surface level stuff that you can do, right? But there is so much that you don't know about communities or libraries until you're actually there. Um, you know, but I can say that, so I think as far as the Grafton Library right now, the immediate challenge is support. You know, in that last meeting, it was very obvious that the staff are desperate to have support and to have someone to steer the ship, you know, um, and that's going to happen. Like what that is something that when things are in flux, they're in flux, you know, um, and I, I would say that that helping everyone feel steady and calm and reassured and supported would be kind of the first thing as far as like, I think the new director really needs to address as soon as they get in, um, you know, but just as far, uh, guys, I am so sorry. I was not, <laughs> um, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay on, on track here, but, um, 
my brain was ready earlier and now I'm like, I'm, I'm struggling. <laughs> so my apologies. But anyway, so as far so if I if I could interrupt you, I, I will uh, just maybe put your mind a little at ease in that I've always been candid at every meeting to say that it's for me, especially late at night, that happens to me as well. So just we just roll yeah, with I'm it. So I'm a morning person. Like all right, so talk meeting is my, you know. So right. um please feel free to like tell me to stop talking or no, 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 <laughs> just so it, did, did, but did you need did you need John to to uh uh no, re, so I repeat think, the yeah, question? Okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. Um so as far as just libraries in general, you know, you're gonna get the standard answers, the First Amendment stuff, the highly divided communities, the all the political stuff around it, right? That's kind of like the easy answer. To me, what I think is most challenging for libraries right now is advertising. Um, it's how to communicate to the community the services, programs, and resources that we are offering them um, that they are already paying for with their tax dollars, right? Um, I hate when we really boast about the library being free, you know? Like, I always say that my programs are free, and they are, but, like, you paid for this service, and you should take advantage of it. Um, you know, in my current position right now, advertising, getting the word out about what we're doing um, is the biggest struggle of my current position, honestly. You know, like every day I have my regular patrons that have come in for years and they're like, oh, I didn't know you had a shelf over there with all the new books on it. And I'm like, it's literally the first thing I did when I started here three and a half years ago, <laughs> you know? Um, so just really trying to communicate like, um, there are resources at you, your disposal um, and we want them to be used um, because if they're not, then we're just throwing money away, right? Um, and I think that Grafton in particular has this beautiful new building and this beautiful maker space, right? And I know that it's been really challenging with programming and not having the children's space right now. So I think one of the big challenges is going to be once, you know, like I saw your programming is starting back up, which is fantastic. Um, but once that space gets reopened, inviting the community back in to say, you know, we're open, we're here, the resources are here, like, please come see us. Um, we're ready for you, that new carpet is in, you know, um, and just just getting the word out to people. I think the way that people use social media has changed a lot as well. So when I was previously in my position in Pittsfield, I used Facebook events for everything. That was the biggest way to get the word out about stuff. I would have a program and I would have 400 people that had responded to it, right? Now, if I make a Facebook event, no one sees it. The algorithm never scoops it up, you know? And um, so how are we accessing those people? And also in that same vein, how are we accessing people that don't see themselves as library users, right? Um, if you live in the town and you pay taxes, you are a patron, even if you've never set foot in the library before. Um, so it is my job to bring you into the library and show you what we can offer. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dana. Hi, thank you, Roger. Hi. Um, and thanks, thank you, Sam. Um, well, um, uh, what I was, well, my question, um, is that, I, and you've, you have, um, touched on some, some of this already, but, um, because of, of several issues, we've had some up and down, up and down issues or concerns with, with transitioning to the new light, new facility and um, new challenges with the staff and the patrons. And um, I'm wondering how how would you interact with the staff to alleviate any of their anxiety or, or sometimes tension among them? Be present. Be present is the biggest thing, you know. Um, model 
they're not going to trust me right off the bat. They have been through a lot in the past few months. Um, I am an interloper, <laughs> right? Um, that trust has to be gained. I definitely do not believe in respect just due to title. Um, I My staff respects me because I'm good at my job and I'm a good supervisor. Um, so I would want to meet with them. I would want to say, Okay, so right now in this exact minute in time, what is the most pressing issue? Like, you know, and it might be something that we can address and it might not, but at least them being able to say to the person in charge, this is the issue can be incredibly cathartic, you know? Um, I would build relationships with them, you know? Um, I'm not a small talker by nature, but I am very warm and welcoming, um, you know? So it would be really important to me to give them space to introduce themselves beyond their name, right? Like, how long have you worked here? Like, I would sit down and meet with everybody when I started in, um, when I started in Milford, I sat down with each one of my staff. Um, I had them fill out a little survey about, this is how I like to be supervised. If I could wave my magic wand right now and change one thing, it would be this thing. Um, this is what I think is working really well for our department. This is something I think should change. And I would definitely bring that with me into Grafton because I, I found it incredibly helpful. Um, you know, I think really just being present and around and having that door open and being available for comments, questions, concerns is really what they're looking for right now. You know, like being, I think, you know, just being able to walk in and put the check mark on the teen room rug and get that out of there is like great. Um, you know, th those little, those little things. Sorry, Dana, go ahead. Well, the question I had too is now how many, who are you supervising now? Uh, um, just so I have an idea of that. Sure. So I supervise a staff of four, three part-time, nope, three full-timers and one part-timer. But when I was in Pittsfield, I supervised a staff of 15, um, which is just a little bit less than I think you guys have around 20-ish mm -hmm. staff. Um, so, you we know, 20. I, I'm sorry. No, we have 20. Yeah, have okay, 20, that's yeah. what I that's what I thought. Um did you deal with unions? Yes, so we have a union in Milford. I was a union chair for a year. Um and just decided that I couldn't adequately provide the service that was needed and also do my job at the same time. So um, but yeah, I have, I have worked with the unions and I actually wrote, wrote our last collective bargaining agreement. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. you bet. Okay. Thank you. And, um, so Aaron, um, hello, Sam. Hello. Hi. Um, so you've done a fantastic job, uh, really kind of painting a picture and, and a lot of what you've already said has um, really kind of uh, answered some of my questions. Um, you know, and you really are speaking our language. I mean, at least my language, but again, I, I try to speak for everybody. I think that's my thing, <laughs> but really just um, uh, getting the word out about the library because um, I was not a library supporter, you know, uh, until I, I stepped foot into the library, I had kids, I didn't know what to do with them. And now look at me now, right? I'm talking to you and, and we're, you know, we're trying to hire a new director. So yeah. I've come a long way. So I definitely believe in that, you know, 100%. Um, so, but uh, one of the things that, that I really want to reiterate that this is, this is a leadership position, right? Which you, which you know, um, you know, and uh, we're really looking for, for a strong leader. Um, you know, there's a lot of administrative uh, duties as well, which oh, yeah. is e equally important. But, you know, um, I think everybody at the library wants to feel feel valued, right? And I think having having um, the individuals feel valued is a way to kind of achieve the, you know, Grafton's goals and the library goals. So, you know, with that in mind, um, it's not really a question, but certainly uh, if you want to reflect on that, you know, I'd be willing to hear, hear that as well, but certainly it's kind of a similar question that other people ask, so. 
Yeah, absolutely. So I thank my staff every day for coming in and doing their job when they leave Great. at the end of the day. Um, and I don't, it's not lips, lip service. I am, thank you for coming in today. You did a great job. Love the way that you handled blah, blah, blah. Um, that feedback is, is instrumental in the way that I lead. Um, you know, it's not always, I, I could sit here and be very positive and I'm such a great leader and my team is great. And like, I'm a great use services librarian, you know, and all these things are true, but it's not always the rainbows, right? Um, so, you know, there are occasionally times that I have to give feedback that is less <laughs> complimentary, um, but we always talk, it's always a learning moment, you know? Um, but for the most part, I really strive to make my staff feel supported in the work that they are doing. If they don't feel supported, they're not gonna wanna be there and they're not gonna do the job that I want them to do, right? Um, so National Library Workers Day is April 9th, it's coming up, you know? Um, previous to when I started in Milford, nothing was ever done for that. Um, there was no acknowledgement of the staff at all. Um, so now every year on National Library Day, I make a big sign and put it up in the break room and bring in donuts. And then for my personal staff, I usually get them a little, um, gift card and then write them a card, like a handwritten card of look at all of these incredible accomplishments that you did this year. Um, thank you so much for the work that you have done. I am incredibly proud of the work that I have done in Milford. It will be very hard to leave that, even though I do feel that it's time for me to move on. But I absolutely could not have made the reputation for the department that I have without my staff. And I tell them how appreciative I am of that every single day. Um, does that answer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, thank you goes a long way in really acknowledging people for sure. I, I totally agree with that. My uh, uh, my company did uh, an appreciation day, I think the first of this past month, and it really was kind of a powerful event, you know, to just sit down, stop, and say, say thank you, um, even if you were kind of forced to do it. But... Some yeah, yeah, like <laughs> my first year, my first year there for um, National Library Workers Day for the entire staff, I got them little packs of Orbit and then make cards and put on the front, you know, um, you're out of this world, right? Like, yep. cause Orbit, <laughs> the, you know, um, but they, nothing, they had never, you know, um, and they all really appreciated it. So, and it's not like, I don't want any, I didn't tell anyone that I did that. My name wasn't on it at all. You know, I didn't want any credit. I just wanted them to feel seen. And I think that they did. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Thank you, Sam. And so, uh, last but not least me. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, as I had asked Tom, I had mentioned, at a high level, a few things about our library, million dollar budget, um, basically being the person in charge of 20 staff and in, in related scheduling, 22,000 square foot building, uh, the admin piece, mandatory state reports, including the ARIS report, monthly director reports. So at a high level, those are just a few examples that lead into my question, which is, um, what steps do you feel would be needed to successfully transition from your current role to this more robust role, which is basically being in charge of the whole works? Yeah. Um, so I already do the heiress report. I do monthly reports for my director. I do um, some of that budgetary piece. Obviously, I'm not in charge of the whole thing, but I um, give feedback on our spending Priorities for the youth services department. Um, I think that we are very lucky in Mass that we have a very supportive library system network. Um, I have two really great mentors that are directors at other libraries um, who have already told me, we want you to have this job. And if you have any questions, you call us and we will show you how to do it, <laughs> uh, which is the best, you know. Um, I can learn how to write a report. I can learn how to make a spreadsheet, but what you cannot teach people is how to be an effective and great leader. Um, you know, so 
I think you also have, you have an administrative assistant and then you also have like a financial person too, right? Right, right now, um, we do have a financial uh, person. We had a, uh, we're in transition on the administrative assistant piece. Uh, our most recent a- a- administrative assistant was working 19 hours, but now it's posted. It's truly a 35 hour a week position. So that is currently posted. Okay. Yeah. And right. so we don't, we don't have an assistant library director as a role, but we do have a slot for a 35 hour per week, um, you know, admin. Great. So there, there is already a support there. So it would take me saying to them, show me how to do this. You know, um, I don't have a problem asking for help. I'm not going to always know the answers. I'm not <laughs> always going to know how to do everything. Um, but I will always ask, <laughs> which I think that a lot of people don't, right? We just assume, um, or we go to the Google, which is not the answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think that meeting with the board and getting your guys' feedback about where the state of things are for you. Um, so I did not to kind of like take us off in into, you know, but I did um, on the website is the little placeholder for the strategic plan. So we would need to, you know, where are we on that? Um, In the last board meeting, you guys had mentioned the budget meeting and needing to get some paperwork and stuff together for that. So where are we with that? Um, Yeah. I don't want to downplay this at all. Like I, I do realize that the administrative step is bigger than what I am currently doing, but I definitely feel competent in my skills to take that on. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So, um, a uh, well, closing statement. We all, I know, right? You weren't ready for the opening statement. I, I say that tongue in cheek, but. But we also allowed Tom a, a closing statement. So um, the floor is yours to uh, close out the discussion. Sure. Is this where, if I have questions, should I ask them in this piece? Yeah, sure. Sure. If you have any. Yeah. Great. Um, okay. So what is the status of the strategic plan? We're three years overdue. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, in other words, COVID put a little bit of, of um, delay on this, um, but um, the only thing that's a, str- a lack of a strategic plan um, prevents us from doing now is to ach- um, apply for state technology grants. Yep. So it's not. Well, it Milford didn't... is also three years out of date, so mm-hmm. you are not the only one. Um, okay. <laughs> I think a lot of libraries are struggling with that right now. Yes. Uh, yes, Aaron. So we um, we were in the process of hiring a, a facilitator. And um, then the director um, decided to go on leave. So it kind of put that whole process on hiatus. We had other priorities, but we were, we were this close to um, yeah. uh, getting a facilitator. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think if we weren't, were to spin that up, um, you know, uh, I think we could do that pretty easily. Yeah, I really liked that. I guess my question was like, I really like the survey questions that are up there and out there. Like, do you, but they're tied to the previous director's like email. Do you guys have access to that? Is that... Or are we kind of starting at square one with that? Do you know what I mean? Doesn't really matter. Just <laughs> curious. Uh, that is a question from Sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, no. No. It's it's a valid it's a valid question, <laughs> but but I, I think we'd have to discuss how old is too old that it, it sure. makes sense to move forward and start baking from scratch. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I just I really liked the the questions on it, um, and thought there could be some really great information from that. Um, so I also noticed during the last board meeting mention of the addition of a new uh, full-time employee. Is that, do, do you know what department that's going into? Oh, who's it? Uh, uh, is it Mary? Who's the um, the head of, there is a new um, department director. Okay. And, and I'm drawing a blank. I apologize. And. It and if I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I don't specifically recall. Yeah, do you, it, you mean Alison Kushner's position? No, no, no. The um, oh, 
No, she's uh, brand new. I and feel I, like it I've might be borrower. I was just curious because I noticed that there was no head of reference. Is that something that has never existed or is it currently open? Is that Heidi? We have a reference librarian. Yeah, that's Heidi. No, so there's two reference librarians, but there's no head of the department listed. Oh, it should be Heidi Fowler, yeah, right? Heidi's oh, okay, great. Right. Yeah. Excellent. I just thought it was, it was, you don't really see that. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that could uh, maybe be a function of the, uh, uh, a need to update the website. Yeah. She's been yeah. in that position for a long time. It's, you know, though, it's really not, the website really is not in bad shape. I was able to find the information I needed mostly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, I make this joke all the time, but like for information and technology professionals, our databases and websites are always terrible. <laughs> um, I don't know where the disconnect is there, but we just are not super great at that. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, and then what should the, you know, I feel like I have given you some information about me. Um, what should the relationship between the board and the director look like to you? And that is to the group at large. <laughs> right. I'll throw that question out to my peers first and then I, I can weigh in. Okay. <laughs> don't I think you don't all answer at once. In. I know. <laughs> weigh in, Roger, because, yeah. Um, Okay, it so, might get so rather lengthy to discussing. Yeah, now. yeah. Okay, so so basically, the the trustees hire the director, and would work closely with the director to, um, you know, during the whole onboarding process. Um, it is typical that we uh, rotate leadership roles once a year, okay. in in May. So I'm the current chair and. Um, so as we meet on the fourth Wednesday of each month, so so there we we will also potentially be in transition with a new chair toward the, the end of May, but right. whoever is that chair would work closely on a regular basis. I'm not sure if there's in the past has been a defined frequency or length of communication, but there's always open lines of communication between the current chair and the director about what's going on. Um wouldn't necessarily be there physically on a day-to-day -day basis, but um, the chair and the library director would develop a, a sort of game plan as to that transition first and foremost from the onset of employment uh, to that um, uh, initial probationary period, which is typically according to the town, no more than six months. Okay. And, and then on a regular basis, just having those lines of communication open. I, I don't think there's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, my my fellow trustees, that I'm not aware that there's been anything written in stone as to some hard, fast process or methodology um, or schedule by which the chair um, would communicate with the director. And and so maybe Aaron can, can weigh in on that both about the chair's role and other trustees keeping lines of communication open with the director. Yeah, so um, I was a chair a few, a few years ago and it's really kind of um, just keeping the lines of communication open. Like, like Roger said, you know, the expectation is that we hear uh, a report from the director at our board meeting each month. I, I don't know if that was clear or not, but certainly um, the, the role of, of the uh, the director and, and communicating with the, the board um, real informally. I used to have just a, a five, five fifteen phone call on a Monday with, with the director, um, and, you know, on my ride home from work, just to kind of um, just talk. Uh, it could be about anything. Um, and it was just a regular call just to have that, um, you know, because I, I think the, the director sometimes doesn't have any peers. Um, in terms of who they can speak to, because every everyone at the library is staff. I mean, there's some people who work in town, but but the library board, um, you know, uh, certainly our best interests are of the community, the same as same as the director would be. So there's a lot of synergy there. Um, so that's what I would probably expect. 
uh, in terms of the, the communication where the board is speaking with the director or, or the designee um, regularly. Okay, great. It's, yeah, pretty typical. Great. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to say that we just, as a board, um, want to support our director. So um, for things like, for example, when um, the director presents the budget to um, due to the finance committee, um, we would, you know, make sure that we have representation to, you know, help support and advocate for the library and, you know, and understand, you know, kind of what's being presented and, you know, kind of, you know, help, help support, you know, in, in general. And, you know, and Ara said, you know, kind of help, you know, act as um, mentors and, and provide new guidance as well. Yeah. Great. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Carrie. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, what, so what we, I guess my oh, final, like, I guess my final, like, closing statement would be, you all seem really great, please hire me. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, uh, but seriously, like, I really think that Grafton would be a really good fit for my particular skill set, um, and seems like a community-oriented place that I am definitely looking to, to be part of. Um, you know, yeah. No, that's cool. All that's right. Great. I'm sorry. Right. No, you don't have to apologize. That was that was perfect. It's like what three o'clock in the morning now? Like yeah, I don't right. know. Eight eight fifty nine. Eight fifty nine. But all right. Awesome. If I can provide any other information, you all have my email. Please feel free to reach out. Um, I would what be will, happy. Uh, it, it, we will absolutely do that. What uh, for? Uh, what we'll, we're going to do now, and we did with Thomas. We we sort of parked him back, as we didn't hide him, right? We he he was privy to your conversation, I think, and or not? No, no, actually, no. he's in the waiting no. room. But okay, so so yeah. since he's in the waiting room, and then we do we put do we put both Sam and Tom now as being able to see our conversation? Well, aren't we going to end it soon with them? Yeah, but in other words, they can now that they've both been interviewed as an open meeting, they can be privy to our discussion oh. without being hidden from that discussion is what I'm asking. I didn't so I I just want, aware of that. I thought we'd go yeah. into executive session. No, no. Well, it, executive session would um, only be needed if we were to actually select someone tonight. OK, and then that executive session would be regarding strategy for negotiations and and such so, so okay so what i'm saying is is that we're going to have a discussion as to what we want to do and and whether there will be a next step for one or both of them um you know potentially in person and if that is the case that would really negate the need for an executive session because the executive session was parked there for to con strategy uh, in preparation for contract negotiations. And that only occurs if we actually voted to select one of them here tonight. Oh, uh, so is that one question we might ask all of us, each other? Is that what you're saying? So, so yes. What, in other words, we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll have a discussion about what we want to be as the next steps. Okay. But both okay. Sam and Tom, now that, in other words, the purpose of each of them being parked in that waiting room, that has now been achieved. Yeah. Why don't okay? Why don't so I bring Tom back? I'll bring yeah. Tom back, and yeah. then we'll move him, move move him and Sam to uh, attendees. Yeah. Okay. We'll, great. We, Thank we, you. We'll tell him that because he didn't. He doesn't know what's happening. So you'll be privy to this discussion. Just you yeah. won't be hidden anymore. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Sam. Great. Thank you all so much. Thank all right. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Here comes Tom. Um, we may also want to, uh, I don't know if it's possible to open the chat or something like that, Roger, but maybe that that's a thought as well. No, I, I, um, I'm not sure. I really hadn't been prepared for that aspect of, of this. Um, I, I, the, I, I'd, I'd said at the head of the meeting that there wouldn't be public comment. So I, I think in all fairness, I, I set that stage for anyone that may have onboarded thinking that they could comment. Mm -hmm. And then I've told them at the head of the meeting that there wouldn't be comment. So then to open that up at this stage in the game, I think would not be fair to the public. 
Plus we're okay. doing the interviewing. And so um, not to, not to, um, not that the public's opinions aren't valued, but I had already mentioned at the head of the meeting that there wouldn't be yeah. public comment. Yeah, maybe, um, Roger, maybe we can share the um, trustee email address so of people mm -hmm. who have been um, attending the meeting mm -hmm. um, or watch it subsequently, um, they can uh, send uh, a message to the trustee email. I thought um, that was a closed email address. I oh. thought that was a closed loop and that was amongst us. It was a, uh, it was our distribution list. Do we have a um, public I email list? The, I thought we have one on the website, <laughs> but let me check. Well, so uh, why don't why mm -hmm. don't we get this out of the way first to let Tom and Sam know what we're going to do right now, and then we can okay. continue our discussion. We're, we're to going to we're going to park. We're going to we're going to relegate both of you to uh, non participant, but you'll be able to view our discussion. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, Sam. All right, thank, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, you too. The, the only way they can email the board is through the website. There's like a, what do you call it? A contact us form. thing. Yeah. If you right. have any, I, well, I'll give you my personal email address if you if that would be helpful. And I could always forward it to the board as well. Um, um, and so even though I don't see them, it's R. Trahan Jr., R. T. R. A. Uh, Roger, you're giving out your personal email to the public. That's, do you want to that, do that? Uh, I've had, the, I put it on the agendas and other okay. committees, including this okay. agenda tonight. Okay. Yeah, no, I appreciate your concern, but even today's tonight's agenda has my cell phone and my personal email address. Um, so R. Trahan Jr., R T R A H A N J R at hotmail.com. I'm aging myself. At least I don't have a CompuServe account. Um, so, um, um, can I add something? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think Carrie, maybe you mentioned that, uh, there is like a contact form for the trustees on the website. I want to say that that doesn't work right now because, right. um, mm -hmm. the email I had sent out to everyone from one of our, uh, patrons <laughs> that I know, um, I didn't get something like, like a message from the website or anything like that. Um, and so she, she had reached out to me directly. Uh, about that okay. um so so there's that uh and just as an fyi i was going to invite her to the next like uh, regularly scheduled board meeting to to talk about the things she, she had um brought okay. up in that just as an just as an fyi mm -hmm. i'm going to test it out <laughs> okay so can we begin it's getting late i know i know yeah i, I was just yeah um so um I will um, not hog the floor. Um, what are your thoughts about um, in the in between the uh, two interviews? Um, just to rehash, um, offer the position to one, pending the you know the references, et cetera, or have one or both candidates probably have both candidates to the library and meet the staff as the next step, or pass over both finalists and uh, saying that we think that neither is ready. For, to, to assume the role mm -hmm. and, and and such. So um Carrie, <clears throat> excuse me. Um I don't think they're both wonderful candidates. Um I would love to invite them both back <clears throat> to tour the library, to meet with our library staff and to get feedback from um from our <clears throat> librarians um so that we um can make a you know a more deliberate decision. Yeah. How about you, uh Aaron? So I agree with Carrie, but I think we need to frame um, the the visit to the library. Mm -hmm. so, so generally, um, when I was interviewing a few years ago, uh, it was certainly appropriate during the interview process to get a tour of the building, say hello to the staff, you know, with a guide that says, oh, this person is a candidate for the new library director. We're just mm -hmm. giving them a tour, you know, and they can say hello. But I don't think it would be something where they could meet with the staff. I don't think that's appropriate. I think it's just a tour of the library. They can say hello and people can say, yeah. oh, nice to meet you. Where are you from? And ask questions if they want to. But, and, and knowing that what is the best day to do that and best time to capture the most folks? Well, I think it would be nice if, if, the, if the town, uh, you know, William Blake or, or um, you know, Evan would, would be willing to do that. Certainly a trustee could do that as well. Um, right. I know there were some people volunteering to do that. Yeah. yeah. So Carrie. <laughs> Keeping in mind, um, William is currently on site on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I believe, as acting director. So 
Um, no, no, Evan's the, yeah, Evan's the acting oh, I'm director. I'm sorry, I said William. I meant Evan. Yeah, Evan is thir Tuesdays and Thursdays currently, right? Right. So, <clears throat> yeah. uh, although I think it's important that a trustee is is the one that's doing the tour. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. I mean, and, I, uh, I'll, I'll just speak up too. I guess. Well, I'll raise my hand. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, I mean, I agree with both both Carrie and Aaron. I think both candidates offer you know different slightly different histories and experiences, but both very well qualified and excited um, at the opportunity of, of looking at both of them. And I think it's important that they come see the library. John, did you have uh, input? And then I'll I'll call on Dana, I guess. All right. Um, I, I agree on that. Uh, both are great candidates. I uh, would love to bring them in, meet them in person. Um, I can probably be available uh, depending on the specific day, but I can probably make some time during the day to do that as well. Yeah, and, and me as well. Dana, your thoughts? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I think that makes sense. I mean, obviously there's four, everyone else on the board agree, thinks that. I think that makes sense. And I guess I would just echo what Aaron said as far as make sure that um, we, that we are, everyone's understanding <clears throat> what, what the tour and the visit is about. It's like a meet and greet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I think and it would also give the candidates the opportunity to see the library too. Right. I mean, it, right. and get a better idea. So, okay. and I, I think they're both great too. And I, I'm hoping we can wrap this up. It won't take us too long to. <laughs> no, no. Right. Can, they're both really can, great. Right. Yeah. Carrie. And, and then Doug, one line, then I'll weigh in. Carrie, you had another question? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely like we would want to schedule as soon as possible. So I, I guess, is it possible for us to do it as like a posted meeting, just so any of the trustees that are available yes. to join aren't prevented. Because I would hate for it, to, you know, it would if we're like, you know, it might we might might not be able to find a time that works for everybody. But if we were all able to come, and we do understand that it's um, you know, it's just a meet and greet, but a absolutely, we could, we could yeah, do like, some tea and coffee, your know, coffee and you know munchkins or something and you know so and, it, it and yeah like it, yeah yeah absolutely um and then uh it, we would uh do it as a posted meeting and um yeah. just in case a quorum showed up that's always the yeah. safe yeah. that's always safe we do that for all the other various functions you know national night out and etc um and did you have one last comment doug well, yeah, I was just, uh, right. I think it would be valuable to, uh, how are we going to do the um, reference checks? Like, is it going to be a uh, subcommittee? Would it be Carrie and I since we did the original one? Or should we just pick a couple of people to do the reference oh, checks? Or um, would maybe, that be Evan? Oh, you know, it, it's, um, I hadn't thought of that, but I know that Tom, all right. So Sam gave five references. Tom had not given references. So we'd have to ask for references and how many would that be minimum and maximum? Um you know, Sam uh, had offered five. In we her... definitely don't want more than five. <laughs> no, no, no. I know that. I know. Two. Usually, it's three. Three yeah. is the normal. And I think right. I think the references should be called. Right, and and I will weigh in that um, at first glance on paper, I did have questions as to whether both of them had enough breadth of experience with all of the stuff that um, would be entailed with this size library, especially if it wasn't entirely clear from their applications, how many people they supervise other than supervisory responsibilities sort of been sort of having been included. And um, I think that both of them, these questions allowed us, it allowed me to see that they had more experience with um, supervision and oversight about most recently or in the recent past than I thought. And so mm -hmm. I think I came into the meeting thinking I would be more um, inclined to say, hmm, maybe they're not ready for this. But I agree with everyone here that I, I think they off both offer some really good qualifications, um, <clears throat> including um, you know, supervisory, even even though they haven't been an assistant director or a director, I think both of them bring some really good skill sets and supervision um, to the role. And just like anyone else, there's always going to be a learning curve, even if you've been a 
library director in the past elsewhere. Um, so I'm on board with the next steps. Uh, Aaron? Yep, absolutely. Um, and we did talk about that as a um, um, as an option too uh, when we were discussing uh, the role and, and what what sort of candidates we might get. Um, right. So I think that was appropriate. Um, so if if there's going to if we're inviting someone as a next step to the to the library, um, that's that's really two separate meetings. I would I would assume. So just yes. keep that in mind. Um, and you also have to uh, certainly mention that it's optional. You know. Um, so, so that they have the option to decline it, it you know, if for whatever reason, you know, it makes it difficult because they're both working and I know that can right. be tough, but we do have pretty flexible hours. So I don't think that would be, that that would happen, but certainly uh, I think it would be um, appropriate if, if we uh, didn't say it was mandatory. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so let, let me ask you this and with the question of our references, would that only be if once we decided on a single person versus at this point, going forward with references on two finalists, even before having narrowed down to one? Or would that be a strategy that would be beneficial? I've never done this before. Um, is it premature to go forward with, I mean, I don't think it's premature to, to have Tom move forward with giving us references, but would it be premature to move forward with calling the references of both individuals? Or would that maybe help the situation? as far as speeding up the process? I mean, I personally would be in favor of doing that for both, but maybe that's a question we ask Evan, if that's Well, here, here's okay. the thing. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if that's well, okay. And, I mean, and here, and here, well, here's the thing is that I think we're getting back, I don't want to get back into the discussion of we're really in charge here. I mean, although he oversees the personnel plan and the personnel policies, um, um, you know, I we're, we're doing the we're doing the hiring and the recomm recommendations and so um i mean i could certainly run it by them to see if there's any any legal issues or employment law issues from one of us calling references i think that certainly need to be we certainly mean, need to and that any documentation would be i guess a certain level of privacy um, so I can certainly reach out to them for that reason, but I wouldn't, and if there's, if there's no issues, I wouldn't punt it to them because we're as trustees yeah, okay. in charge of the director. Yeah, Dana. I was going to say, um, from my vantage point, um, both of these individuals are both really excellent candidates. Mm -hmm. And I, I would think I, I, um, I, I would like to be able to have the opportunity to to for someone to talk to references from each candidate. That's mm -hmm. my preference. It doesn't have to be a lot of references, but um, you know, one to two would be good. That's my that's my well view. well well. Uh, Sam already gave five in her application, but Tom had not given any. Right, but we need to call these references. I don't think right. we can call five. I think we choose one no. to two. Two, I think, is a good number if we're going to be doing it with two different individuals. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so ask for two references from Tom or I mean, I think yeah, it doesn't matter, but I just think, I think we, it would be difficult. I think calling, talking to two people for each reference, each person would be okay. Not unless other, right. other then, people. But, but, but I, and, and there's a nuance here since Sam already gave five, then I, I think in all fairness, it would be yeah. fair to ask Sam to narrow her five yes. down to two. I agree. Yeah, I, I was thinking what, the same thing, Roger. Well, why not just allow us to pick the two? Yeah, we could pick the two. So yeah, ask but then, Tom but, to give as many references as he wants. I mean, up to five or something. And if he okay. gives us two, then I mean, because all right, you're yeah. generally going to just reach out to one of the more recent references. You know, right. if someone was ten or fifteen years ago, you're probably going to look for a more, right. more recent reference. Right. And and these okay. are just general reference checks. We're not really asking too many specific <clears throat> questions, right? So. No. I, you, we can ask. I mean, no one's going to give somebody a reference that's not going to give them a good reference. Right. So, you, you know, it's just. Yeah, but I mean, like, we're not like trying to follow up on like specific things like you'd mentioned, Roger, the the number of people that they have mm -hmm. had, you know, under them as in, when they're in a leadership position. We're not really looking for that information, are we? 
We're just trying to but, validate their but, kind of yeah. employment and who they were and who they, yeah. what roles they held, right? Yeah. And, and really, we want to get a take from this individual because usually it's like someone that's been in supervisory position who's known this person, has worked with mm -hmm. them for a long time. We would like to ask them, we really want to get a handle on how that person perceives, you know, what his or her experience has been with the individual. That so then it's a very high level question, which would be the same question for both of the references for each of these individuals? Yeah, generally. Most likely, yes. All right. So who's volunteering for that? I mean, I'd be glad to. All right. Is everyone okay with Doug doing that? Yep. All right. He's great. But I, I guess I would communicate. I mean, they're probably both listening in. I, I don't have, as far as surprise, I'm looking at... Um, the attendees and I see I see both of them are in there. Hello, yeah. Sam and Tom. So guys, be happy to assist if um if you find that beneficial too. Mm -hmm. so whatever you know, whatever works. All right. Um, what is the board? All right. So if it's two people, is that is that a subcommittee? I I it may be beneficial just to have one person. I, yeah, one person has to really talk to the person. I think you can't have two people talking to the one reference. Right. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't um, indicating that so, we, so, we have the same line. But if you right. know, if for some reason, Doug, right. you know, needed help to call them. But um, but yeah, but that makes sense to have Doug do it, and then if for some reason you you need help. All right. So I will um, formalize this 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 decision that we're moving forward in this direction to to both of them. All right. And then, and then just Roger, um, the town will do a, a a formal background check, correct? Like any employee, the, that, the that's, town has to do that, right? That That's my understanding, but I'm not sure whether it's once we've selected a candidate and offered them something or whether that's it's- usually how it's done. Yeah, yeah, after we've selected. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then, right. and then if for some reason, you know, something, you know, then it gets withdrawn. But that that's how- that's how okay. I've always seen it done is that that background check is done after the offer is made and it's contingent upon, you know, the, the background check. Oh, right, Dana, so, you have your hand up. I didn't see no, that little yellow hand. I'm sorry. I, I did speak. I just didn't take it down. So okay. So, all right. So I just want to, for the sake of this meeting, um, the, this cuts out at nine 30, this had a finite uh, zoom beginning and end of seven to nine 30 and it's nine 19. So it's going to shut us up if we don't shut ourselves up. So, um, and I've been equally verbose. So, um, so I will confirm, uh, in, in an email that we're taking, uh, the next steps with both of them. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to bring them back on as panelists because I think that would start another discussion that would potentially bring us beyond nine 30. Um, so we're all in agreement that the next steps would be for um, to for me to communicate to both uh, candidates that we are moving forward with offering them um, to attend a walkthrough, um, asking Tom to provide five references, but then we would up randomly call up to five, up to five. And then we would randomly call two of the references from each. And that would be Doug doing that. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and and presumably just high end open ended stuff, but whatever we do, it wouldn't be it would be the same for both of them. I would think. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Okay. All right. Maybe. Okay. And then um, and and then next Wednesday's meeting is next Wednesday's meeting. That's something separate. Um, I'll probably I I will put something on the agenda regarding you know as an update. Um, but I guess um, I will. Um, I guess we will pass over executive session because there's no need for that. And I will accept a motion to adjourn. I make so, a motion to adjourn. All right. Uh, all right. So, so Carrie made a motion, and, and is that Aaron? Second. Your second. All second, right. Yeah. All right. Motion made by Carrie to adjourn. Um, seconded by Aaron. Uh, and by roll call, all those in favor of adjournment, uh, John Babriski. Aye. Carrie Hogan. Aye. Doug Bowman. Aye. Dana Wilson. Aye. Aaron Vandersteen. Aye. 
All right, Roger Trahan, aye. I declare the motion carried, and this meeting is adjourned at 9.22 p.m.